Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome back to The Correct Views. Um, haven't posted in a while. That's not going to be a habit. For those of you that are new to the show, uh, my father is in a physical rehabilitation center. We're going to be doing a cancer fundraiser for him very, very soon. And it's going to be imperative that all of you listening to this help me, because this is very serious. But um, as a result, just running around, I never am home. But I am going to be posting more frequently coming up. Uh, God willing, in the creek don't rise. All right. This is from the economic collapse. Americans are literally being worked to death. How many times have you heard these lioness swines say that Americans are fat and lazy? Well, fat maybe, but lazy, usually not. I mean, you can make an argument, you know, that a certain, um, you know, contingent of any given culture is prone to be lazy. But as this article shows, it is not the norm. What the big banks and the corporations and the power structure as it stands, what they are doing is causing an economic collapse and then blaming it on you and I. Are you constantly tired and feel incredibly stressed almost all the time? Well, that means that there is a really good chance that you are a typical American worker. Even though our incomes are going down, Americans are spending more time at work than ever before. It goes on. In fact, U.S. workers spend more time at work than anyone else in the world, but that has not always been the way. Back in 1970, the average work week for an American worker was about 35 hours. Today, it is up to 46 hours. But there are other major ec economies around the globe that are doing just fine without burning their workers out. For example, the average American worker spends 378 more hours working per year than the average German worker does. Sadly, for many Americans, work is not even finished once they get home from the office. According to 1% survey, the average American worker spends an extra 7 hours per week on work tasks such as checking emails and answering phone calls after normal hours have finished. We get less time off than anyone in the world, and I'm tired of people saying all this negativity regarding Americans when our government is worthless, but we feed you, you ungrateful bastards. If it wasn't for the United States, the world would starve. That is a matter of mathematical fact. And, uh, this, you know, and this is how, even within our own country, um, it's, it's being destroyed from us, and it's all right here. My wife works 14-hour shifts, according to an email that is in this article and her dialysis clinic three times a week and every other weekend. On Tuesdays and Thursdays she has off. She ends up resting half the day to give her poor feet a break since a nurse is on her feet 14 hours straight of continual business and that is exhausting. On top of that, her company has had to freeze pay for three years, has dropped holidays down to just two, with Thanksgiving and Christmas, has canceled the reimbursement of her, CE, or her continuing education credits, also, they no longer match 401ks, and her company health plan has bumped up to $30 a week. And this is what leads to the kinds of things that we're seeing, because when this kind of abuse, and that's exactly what it is, and the, the, the people are treated like uh, filth, like they're, they're worthless, that's when you have people breaking the law to make money. They don't do it because they're lazy. They do it because it is better. Let's face it. I'm going to say it. I am going to say it. It is better for some people's quality of life to break the law and work less than to work more and never see their families. That is the correct view. You know, these things make me sick. Um... Bosworth remarried, but her current husband, Ray, was forced, on, forced onto medical disability when a prescription medication caused her health problems. The couple, who had a fourth child together, struggled to support their family on Lisa's meager income. Bosworth's gross monthly income from working as a classroom aide in Reef's Puffer Schools and doing two Chronicle newspaper routes is $1,900. That amounts to $22,800 annually nearly $5,000 below the poverty line for a family of six. And it goes on and on and on. Um, on the average, the working age Americans work a job is actually lower today. 
And the percentage of working age Americans with a job is actually lower today than it was during the last recession. And this is one of the things that are destroying our country. Um, this is CBS This Morning. Modern wheat, perfect chronic poison, doctor says. And let's face it, how many people are we seeing that are developing strange cancers who never drank, never smoked? It's coming from the food! Um, Davis said that, uh, Dr. Davis, sorry. Dr. William Davis, a cardiologist, has published a book about the world's most popular grain. Davis said that the wheat that we eat these days isn't the wheat that your grandma had. It, it's an 18-inch tall plant created by genetic research in the 60s and 70s, he said on CBS this morning. <clears throat> this thing has so many new features that nobody told you about, such as a new protein that is being called gladin. It's not gluten, it's not addressing people with gluten sensitivities as celiac disease. I'm talking about everybody else because everybody else is susceptible to the gladin protein that is an opiate. That's heroin for you Usher fans. The thing binds into the opiate receptors in your brain and in most people stimulates appetite such that we consume 440 more calories per day, 365 days a year. Therefore, our food is making us hungrier and we are eating more because our food has been designed to harm us. That idiot, uh, Bill Maher, was saying he wanted to promote death. And uh, then, what, what's the other thing? Oh, this, this god, uh, his name's Ed. He didn't sign the email, I'm, or they didn't publish the email. He said that he was... Uh, happy that the food we eat was limiting our life. <clears throat> and he also said that genetic modification is due to the fact that there are too many people in this world and that we need to make these things in order to survive. Baloney! It's not true! As I pointed out in my movie that YouTube needs to put back. Um, look at uh, Correct Views, uh, Request for Help, you'll see what I mean. Um, I mentioned in great detail that the entire population of the world afforded the same living space as an average person in New York City. You could fit the, all of the world's population into Texas. And even if that was true, that we can't grow enough food to feed everybody here, well, America does. So why are we eating genetically modified food? Think about it, people. Asked if, the fam asked if the farming industry could change back to the grain it formerly produced, Davis said it could, but it would not be economically feasible because it yields less per acre. Greed. However, Davis said a movement has begun with people turning away from wheat and dropping substantial weight. So among other things, the genetic modification that we are being forced to eat has made us fatter and more unhealthy and read the article it, it is listed as a toxin there are horrible things in this this is from the examiner anonymous targets philadelphia posts fire will message for followers i love anonymous um i may maybe they're a front for the government but you know if that's the case let's face it we're, we're going to know about it sooner or later because they can't keep it hidden from us. In the meantime, I'm going to root for them. Why? Because they're against the system. And so am I! And a message updated posted on pastebin.com on September 24, 2012. The hacktivist group, Heroes Anonymous, appears to be adding a list of URLs that they are targeting for disruption of service attacks on the city of Philadelphia. Recent reports at Infowars.com followed the attack on internet hosting provider GoDaddy.com, which may have been the responsibility of someone within the anonymous organization and which resulted in the shutdown of millions of websites. On September 22nd, the Daily Caller, it says, reported that the city of Philadelphia and Councilman Kenyatta Johnson had been targeted by anonymous because of a dispute over the vacant lot between the city of Philadelphia and the small business owners and developer Ori Forbush. In his blog, pleasefixphilly.com, I'm sorry, Feebish, F-E-I-B-U-S-H, explains how he's ended up being the subject of a lawsuit initiated by Philadelphia. He says he opened up one of his new businesses at Point Breeze's blighted commercial corridor in years. According to Feebish, he was delayed and stonewalled by elected officials at every turn while trying to open his new business. 
Basically what happened in Philadelphia, I'm not going to read the whole article, is they wanted to stop this man from opening up a business in a blighted, forgotten neighborhood so that they could sell it to people at a higher price later, even though legally they had, there's no reason not to sell him this land. And what I'm saying is, I follow Anonymous on this. Blast Philadelphia. Blast them to no end. A new message posted on Anonymous on September 24th contains at least 11 URLs, all relevant to Councilman Kanata Johnson, along with the message, if you want to improve the attack, add URLs belonging to this domain or related subdomains. Pro tip, you should create a new target and HOIC file if you want to attack a different organization. I'm laying it out for you as best I can, people. I am in favor of bringing our leaders to their knees because they are bringing us to ours. So yes, help these people because a vacant lot is something they want to fight you over. Last thing I want to get to real quick. And where's this from? I got to credit them. Buckeye Firearms Association. Ohio Democrats introduce bill to effectively kill concealed carry in Ohio. You know, Ohioans are getting sick of this. I can tell you. You know how I know this. Because Gary Johnson is polling at 10.6% here. And there's a reason for that. Uh, we had a great economy, and then uh, Bob Taft drove it into the ground. And it has not been well in ages. Two Democrat state representatives, also known as, say it, pieces of human filth, Bill Patman, never vote for Bill Patman, and Ted Celeste, never vote for Ted Celeste, are co-sponsoring a bill to generally prohibit a person from having a firearm on privately owned land or premises unless the person owns, controls, or resides on the land or in the premises. So when somebody dressed up as the Joker comes into a movie theater, you will legally not be allowed to have your gun on you. Now there's been issues before of, uh, let's say I own, I own Sam's Music Studio. It might be against my rules for you to have the gun in my building, and I can make you leave if you do, but you didn't break a law. These pieces of human filth, Mr. Bill Patman, who you should never vote for, and Ted Celeste, who you should never vote for, is trying to make it so that it is a crime to defend yourself when the Joker comes shooting at you. So here's what I say. I say we bombard these two pieces of filth and let them know that we are not going to obey. You can make it a law, and we're not going to obey, because unless we do this, we will lose what dignity we have to even protect ourselves. You are listening to The Correct Views. Thank you for doing so. Good night. God bless.